Bradford, of course. It's one of Tommy's days for proposing. He always proposes on Tuesdays and Thursdays during the season. You didn't accept him, I hope. I make it a rule never to accept Tommy. That is why he goes on proposing. Bother Tommy Trafford. Tommy's a stupid little ass. I love you. I know. And I wish you might have mentioned it sooner. I'm sure I've given you heaps of opportunities. Oh, Miss Mabel, please be serious. Be serious. Oh, now, that's the sort of thing a man always says to a girl before he's been married to her. He never says it after. Mabel, I have just told you that I love you. Can't you love me just a little in return? Oh, you silly Arthur. If you knew anything about anything which you don't, you'd know that I adore you. Everybody in London knows it except you. It's a public scandal the way I adore you. I've been going around for the last six months telling the whole of society that I adore you. I want you consent to have anything to do with me. I've no, no character left at all. <laughs> oh, my dear. And I was so awfully afraid of being refused. But you... You've never been refused yet by anybody, have you, Arthur? Oh, I can't imagine anyone refusing you. My dear, you know, I'm not nearly good enough for you. Oh, I am so glad. I was afraid you were. And I'm... I'm a, a little over 30. But dear, you look weeks younger than that. Oh, how sweet of you to say <laughs> so. And I feel bound to confess that I am, frankly, terribly extravagant. So am I, Arthur, so we're sure to agree. <laughs> Oh, no, I must go and tell Gertie. Really? Yes. But will you tell her that I want to talk to her? I've been waiting to speak to her or Robert all morning. Do you mean to say you didn't come here expressly to propose to me? No. That was a flash of genius. Your first? My last. I'm delighted to hear it. Now, don't stir. I'll be back in five minutes and... Don't fall into any temptations whilst I'm away. Oh, my dear Mabel, while you are away, there are none. It makes me horribly dependent on you. Good morning, my dear. Oh, how pretty you're looking. How uh, pale you're looking, Gertrude. It's, it's most becoming. Good morning, Lord Gordon. Good morning, Lady Chilton. I'll be in the conservatory under the second palm tree on the left. The second on the left. Lady Chilton, I have a certain amount of very good news for you. Last night, Mrs. Cheveley came to see me in my house and gave me up Robert's letter, and I have burnt it. Robert is safe. Safe? Oh, I'm so glad of that. Oh, what a good friend you are to him, to us. There is only one person now that could be said to be in any danger. And who is that? Yourself. I? In danger? What do you mean? Lady Chilton, yesterday you wrote me a very beautiful womanly letter asking me for my help. You wrote to me as one of your oldest friends, one of your husband's oldest friends. Mrs. Cheveley stole that letter from my rooms. What use is it to her? Why should she not have it? Lady Chilton, I will be perfectly frank with you. Mrs. Cheveley puts a certain construction on that letter and proposes to send it to your husband. But what construction could she put on it? Oh, not that. Not that. If I, in trouble... Wanting your help, trusting you, propose to come to you. Oh, are there women as horrible as that? Lady Chilton, let us tell Robert everything at once. You want me to tell Robert that I wrote to you in those terms? It is better that he knows the exact truth. No, I couldn't. I couldn't. May I do it? No. Oh, Lady Chilton, you are wrong. No, the, the letter must be intercepted, that is all. But how can I do it? I dare not ask the servants to bring me his letters. Do his secretaries open his letters? Yes. Who is with him today? Tommy Trafford, isn't it? Yes. Now, Tommy would do anything for you, wouldn't he? Oh, I think so. Now, he would be able to recognise the letter without reading it, couldn't he? On pink paper? I suppose so. Is he in the house now? Yes. I will go to him and I will ask him to stop a letter from reaching Sir Robert on pink paper. He has it already. I want you, I trust you, I am coming to you. Gertrude. Oh, my love, is this true? If so, then it was for me to come to you. This letter of yours, Gertrude, makes me realise that nothing the world may do can hurt me now. You want me. Yes. You trust me? Yes. Oh. Why did you not add that you loved me? Because I loved you. don't know what I feel. When Trafford passed me your letter across the table, he'd opened it by mistake, and I read it. 
Oh, I didn't care what disgrace or ruin were in store for me. I, I only thought you loved me still. There is no disgrace in store for you, nor any public shame. Mrs. Cheveley has handed over to Lord Goring the document that was in her possession, and he has destroyed it. Are you sure of this, Gertrude? Yes, Lord Goring has just told me. So that's what was happening last night. Then I'm safe. For two days I've lived in terror, but now I'm safe. Arthur destroyed the letter. He burnt it. I wish I'd seen that. How many men would love to see their past burning to ashes before them? Is Arthur still here? Yes, he's in the conservatory. Oh, I'm so glad I made that speech in the house last night. <laughs> I made it thinking that public disgrace might be the result, but it has not been so. Public honour has been the result. Yes, I think so. I fear so, almost. For I suppose, although I am safe from detection, although all proof against me has been destroyed, I suppose, Gertrude, I... I should retire from public life. Oh, yes, Robert, you should do that. It is your duty to do that. Well, it is much to surrender. No, it will be much to gain. And you, would you be happy living somewhere alone with me, abroad perhaps, or in the country, away from London, away from public life? You'd have no regrets. Oh, none, Robert. And your ambition for me? You used to be ambitious for me. Oh, my ambition. I have none now but that we two may love each other. Let us talk no more about ambition. <laughs> I don't think your conversation is at all improving. Oh, my darling. What does this mean? It means that this charming, foolish young lady has been clever enough to accept me. Congratulations, Arthur. Arthur. Oh, <laughs> my best wishes to you both. I'm sure you'll make an ideal husband. An ideal husband? Oh, I don't think I'd like that at all. Sounds like something out of the next world. What do you want him to be then, dear? Well, he can be what he chooses. All I want to, to be is, is to be a real wife to him. Oh. Luncheon is on the table, my lady. <laughs>